I don't like saying Pico, so if I say Pico, get over it. This one is really cool and it's actually very affordable, which is surprise me because when you when you don't pay a lot for something you usually don't expect a lot from something or at least me you shouldn't have your hopes up too high if you didn't pay that much for it because you know you know the term you get what you pay for but one of my whole objectives is to look for things that are good for the money less spent your guess is as good as mine as how you pronounce this I'm gonna go with it's pronounced Tomei Tomei T-O-U-M-E-I we'll go with Tomei 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 sounds good this is a variant of the C800 a little Pico Pico projector and I'm going to do my best to take a look at it and illustrate any of the points of it that I can to you. If you have any questions about it, of course, after the video or even during the video, be sure and comment down below and I'll get back to you if I can. Let's take a look at it. I want to do a little bit of a breakdown on it. Hopefully I don't miss anything that's important to you. I'm pretty excited about this one. It's actually really nice for the price and that's something that's exciting because you see a lot of these little projectors and you're just kind of like they just don't quite make the mark. Now, it's no substitute for a home cinema projection that's going to project something like your movie room movie night, but it will get the job done. It's great for portability. It's got a good battery life, a good battery life, not the best. Android 4.4 is baked into it, but let's talk a little bit about that as we go through some of this. Now this little projector uses a DLP projection image. Now here, I promised I would try to cover this in any video I did with DLP, so I'm going to. There are really three main categories of people when it comes to DLP. DLP casts what's called the rainbow effect, and for the larger percent of us, we're probably never going to notice that. For a smaller percentage of us, there's people that are going to be able to see the fact that there's color shifting. It's going to look like the colors are just moving around with the people or the objects or whatever's being projected on the screen. For the lowest and most rare of us, we're going to be able to see the constant color shifting all the time being projected onto the screen and it can be nauseating feeling. Why does DLP do this? DLP is digital light processing. It uses a bunch of mini microscopic mirrors. They're only capable of reflecting one color at a time. This one color goes up in the red, green, blue spectrum. So they'll see these colors essentially just flashing a lot on the screen. It's very rare that somebody can witness all of this all the time. Anyways, I just wanted to cover that a little bit. If you want to know more about it, there's some great reading articles out there. For most of us though, it's not a real issue. I'll be really quick because a lot of it is straightforward and we'll just go over it really fast. This is a focus wheel. It should be pretty obvious what you can do with a focus wheel. It puts things in and out of focus so that you can find the right focus for the projection based on where you are in relevance to where you're projecting the image. You can go forward or back until you find where it looks focused. If you can't see it, you either need glasses or to focus it better. That sounded mean. On the bottom, we have an intake right here. A pretty graciously sized intake. And this intake will draw in air to help cool the components inside. I have not noticed any overheating with this little projector at all. It doesn't even get that warm unless you're charging it. When I'm charging it, it gets kind of warm. Also on the bottom, we have our quarter inch thread screw for putting it on a tripod mount. There is a tripod mount included with it. Looks like a little blower style fan in the front here that's kind of reminiscent of a windmill if you can look in there really good. On the back we have our speaker. We have a power button for turning it on. We have an HDMI. I imagine it's HDMI 1.4. I could be wrong. We have a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary headphone jack. This way you can plug in a headset to it or some external speakers as the internal speakers on this aren't that great. Take a listen. They're not terrible, but they're not that great. Would you really expect that though? You can connect over Bluetooth to a Bluetooth device too, but at the cost of your battery life. So is that worth it to you? I guess that's a good thing that they put this 3.5 in here in case you wanted to plug into something like that. You have a DC five volt input right here for charging it. And it also comes with a wall adapter for charging it. You can plug it into a wall. It takes about four and a half hours for it to charge, sometimes five. I don't know why there's a difference there, but sometimes. It also comes with a DC five volt to USB. You can watch it while it's charging too, which is pretty cool. And it will eventually in about eight to nine, sometimes 10 hours, get to full charge while you're watching it assuming you're plugged into the right power source. You also have a USB right here. It is capable of playing videos from the flash drive. You also have a TF input, which really is just a micro SD card. You can stick your micro SD card in there and essentially do the same thing that you can with the USB. You can also save things to it, give it a little bit of expansion on storage. This thing is super glossy, super glassy, it's super reflective, and you'll notice that you'll leave fingerprints all over this thing. That drives me up the wall. I personally don't like that. Now that we've kind of gone over some of the hardware, we'll move into talking about some other stuff with it too. Take a look at the Android 4.4 that's baked into it. I do like the UI that they have set up for it. I think that it works well. And if you're used to anything Android or you used anything Android in the past, you'll be right at home with it. Oh, one quick note before I forget. I did get one hour, 56 minutes out of one charge time watching just the stock video they put on here. These lovely Asian women. I don't know why that video is on here, but it comes with it so that you can test it out. But then again, on the other time where I just charged it up again and set it to go, I got two hours and six minutes out of it. So it's an okay battery, maybe not the best. Maybe you want something a little bit better, but it's not terrible. It works and it gets the job done. If you've ever seen an Android operating system before, you should feel right at home with this whole setup. Everything in here is very much similar to any Android device. 
When we go in here, we find extra things that are kind of baked in though that make the user experience a little bit better. So in this Android 4.4 under display, we have things like screen rotation, auto calibration, keystone correction, brightness, wallpaper, color temperature, which by the way, the color temperatures are pretty mild. What you can do in color temperatures is set them to cold colors or middle colors or warm colors, and that's about all there is to that. When it comes down to things like auto calibration, you can set the keystone in different ways. Oh, this is cool too, by the way. You can also do inverted ceiling and invert from behind. So if you're on the ground behind doing rear projection, you can do that on this projector. But auto calibration, touching back on this real quick, has the keystone calibration, which is essentially the gyroscopic sensor inside of it that sort of helps with the auto calibration of auto keystone correction. You can turn it off and manually adjust it, which I'll show you in just a moment. Screen scaling is sort of changing it to fit different formats manually. If you wanted to change it to like a 4.3 format, you can do that under there. Within keystone corrections, there's not a whole lot you can do that you couldn't do with the auto correction on, but sometimes we need to make those micro incremental adjustments as we need to. And it's fully loaded with just about all the apps. They got some things on tops, WPS Office, you got the full access to the Play Store, YouTube's already pre on there, Happy Cast and Wi-Fi Display are the essential mirror cast. Under albums, we find that awesome video that I've been showing you. Now, I figured this was a good one to test with. It's one they wanted to, I guess, have on here so that people could try it out and see. It was a great example to include on this projector. While it might be a 480p resolution, a native 480p resolution, you could have fooled me if you told me this was at least 720p. Check out the screen door effect. You might notice we don't have a typical screen door effect that we usually see where it looks like a screen door. It's more like a bunch of patterned diamonds and you have to be pretty close in order to inspect them. I tried to get the camera as close as I could to try to point them out through the moving images. Hopefully you'll be able to see them. Again, I'm super impressed with this. For a 480p DLP projector, check this out. The images are just pretty incredible. Guys, thanks for watching this one. If you like it, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions, if you have input, if you know something about this that I didn't cover, make sure and leave something down below. I can address it if possible. Have a great day, night, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next video I do. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and get subscribed if you want more updates for videos that I do regularly, things that I review. Have a great day, night, whatever it is.